Welcome to another episode of The Handsome Pod. It's Fortune Famester, and I'm joined by... Demi T- Martin. Oh, Tigno Taro. I fucked it. Oh, no, it's always, you didn't. I like that we in, we consistently, like, we don't decide who's going to, what order we're going to do. It's yeah. really, it's a big adrenaline jolt right at the start for me. Yeah, we just kind of jump in and... It's like life, guys. It's like one of those improv <laughs> workshop warm-ups where, like, you're trying to count to 10 without speaking at the same time as anyone. You know what I mean? Mm. I've like, never zip, done improv. Zip, zap, zap. Oh, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> you never did improv? <laughs> no. I just did a guest spot on an improv show at the Groundlings uh, last week. It was my first time there in, like, two years. Mm. Was it fun? It is fun. It's just a whole different thing. Like, you have to, like, let yourself be silly. Yeah, again, I love it. And not judge. Where would you rank stand-up, improv, sketch, acting, writing, all that kind of stuff in in your careers? In terms of, like, enjoyment? Yeah, what do you, what are you drawn to most, May? Oh, man, that's really hard. I kind of re- rediscovered stand-up, or, or sorry, improv after... Um, feel good came out because I felt like then people were coming to see me and they wanted like really dark personal stand up and I, I just wanted to be dumb and silly and I loved just like playing with my friends and doing dumb voices and playing like an old lady or like <laughs> Debbie. Oh. yeah De- yeah so I've fallen back in love with it so at the moment I'm like I don't know man but then I'm never gonna stop doing stand up it's the it's the best but uh, so that's my answer is i don't know (laughs) you've been doing a lot of shows in la they're they're just improv right a lot of the ones you've been doing lately i do a lot of improvised stand-up with a bucket of questions from the audience Mm -hmm. and i really love i really love doing that yeah the shows you do with um stephanie uh are those stand-up or improv or a boat or both no, those are just improv. Me, Stephanie, and Alana. And oh, man, those two are so funny. Uh, and we have such different energies. It is super mm. fun. Yeah, those are, that's like the funnest. We do, yeah, I've we do seen like, that. yeah, we'll do like an hour long show and it gets really melodramatic and kind of emotionally cathartic. And Stephanie's just such a good actor. That yeah. There's something so funny about when she's just really grounded in a scene mm-hmm. and you're like, I'm, just acting with a really brilliant actor who's playing like a therapist or like, you know, uh, this yeah. is just so funny when she really commits to just being like very, where you're like, well, my leg fell off in a sewer. <laughs> and she's like, oh my God, like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like she just is playing the truth of the reaction. You know? Yeah. 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 yeah she's, she's good. Funny. She's good. I, I she live was- with her. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie was right behind me in the groundlings a program and i would love going to see her shows because she was always so unique when you said stephanie was right behind me in the groundlings i just pictured her just following you around like standing (laughs) right behind you (laughs) she was in the program the the group right behind after mine Mm -hmm. and she did a thing at the mall um the sketch take uh took place at a chico's and it was a fashion show for chico's (laughs) it made me laugh (laughs) so hard everyone's in these like culottes and um, (laughs) blouses what's a culotte (laughs) it's like um it's like a pant that has big flowy legs okay um for like people that women wear like in the summer when they don't want to wear shorts oh Mm. nice she was like the person narrating the fashion show (laughs) it was just so funny (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh comedy's fun you guys you guys not always but <laughs> sometimes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well i started an improv that was like uh that was my way into stand-up stand-up mm-hmm. seemed too scary to Me just too. start there mm. so Same. i took classes at uh, the groundlings to learn improv and and that's what helped me get like I had stage fright back then, mm-hmm. and that helped me get rid of it, learning improv. And did you move to L.A., Fortune, to be an actor or a stand-up? or? No, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I got You just knew you were a star. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that, for sure. You just knew you were one of God's favorite children. Yes. That's right. I was the chosen one. I had never done stand-up. I had never done improv when I moved to L.A., 
Uh, I had done acting in theater at college, but wasn't the best. I was like, again, I had that stage fright. We also weren't doing comedies, so it was like dramatic stuff and So what was your vision in your head when you were moving to well, L.A.? I got a job to um, doing like PA type stuff. And so mm-hmm. um, I moved for just the life experience. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I don't really want to go to grad school yet. And I've never been to L.A. and I got this job opportunity. I was like, yeah, why not? Let's just have a life thing and then i can be a grown-up later Mm -hmm. um so i moved not really knowing what i was doing and then when i was here i had a hard time making friends Mm -hmm. Um, what yeah because matt you're the most like rude just you are (laughs) the (laughs) rudest (laughs) coldest (laughs) i was shy though really i was i was in a shy phase because i had just moved from spain i was living in spain for a year Right. And I found when I was living in Spain, I became kind of in, uh, more introverted. I'm already kind of an um, extroverted introvert. Mm-hmm. Um, and that Spain made me really introverted. And it seeped into my first year in L.A. I was pretty shy. Right. So I wasn't like the bubbly, chatty. I was just kind of like, hey, guys. You were the shy <laughs> P.A. Yeah. The shy <laughs> P.A. is a pretty good character. Anybody want to okay. hang out? Hi, I'm like, no, sorry. Weirdo. Do you want to? Uh, they're like, why haven't you asked me if I want a coffee? And you're exactly. like, I was going to. I just didn't know how to um, ask. Um, do you want one? Yeah, uh, I'm not shy. Speak up. Oh, I'm the shy uh, production assistant, <laughs> sir. Uh, I wasn't even out yet. I didn't even know I was gay when I moved to LA. If you, everyone else believe did. Believe it. They sure did. Mm-hmm. The shy closeted PA is my shy favorite new sitcom. PA. From, I'm like, yeah, any single guys are probably like, who is this person? <laughs> Wait, were you really inquiring about single guys? Oh, I wasn't inquiring, but I was like, oh, yeah, I'm single. I haven't met the right guy. I just haven't met the right guy, <laughs> oh the right guy yet. <laughs> That's what uh, I used to do a joke about that when people um, were like, oh, yeah, you just haven't found the right guy yet. I was like, uh, you're right. Um <laughs> Uh, and until then, uh, I'll just I'm keep do this uh, gay thing. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep gaying it up until the right guy comes along. Well, obviously, in hindsight, I look back and go, "Oh my god!" Like, are you kidding me? I was so gay. I'm and, single. I'm I mean, single since and I was shy. Like a kid. Do you know any shy guys? Are there any like really sensitive guys that like to talk about their feelings? Because I'd be really into that. I, it's fine if they're gay. <laughs> So I was single, clearly. (laughs) Single and no friends. Were you tempted to try New York ever, you two? Or was L.A. always the... I didn't plan to move to L.A. Um, My childhood best friends. We grew up together. We moved around um, just based on where they were going to college or grad school and all of that. (laughs) You tagged along? Yeah, I was just tagging along. And then (laughs) we were in Colorado my friend finished uh, getting her master's and they wanted to, the two of them wanted to move to LA to get into TV and film. And I was like, well, I guess I'll come just not because I wanted to be in TV or film or stand up or anything. I was just like, well, I couldn't possibly imagine my life without them. So uh, we moved out to LA and I slept on their couch and got a place, but I saw in the paper that you could do stand up at like mm-hmm. coffee shops and laundromats and everywhere in LA. So I um I started doing stand up and then I accidentally I landed here. Remember when you could find stuff in the paper? Like I yeah. found you I used to find all my apartments and jobs in the newspaper. Like yeah. in Toronto the the weekly uh, now magazine. But yeah, mm-hmm. you go to the back and it would be like looking for a roommate or um Mm -hmm. you know call center job or whatever those are those are the days oh my god was popular when i first moved to la Mm -hmm. that's how i did start making friends eventually was i went on craigslist stop well i joined the growlings the improv started making friends there and then i joined like a ultimate frisbee team and a 
soccer oh, team. My oh, gosh. Viola Craigslist? I went to an African Well, like drum- any good straight, shy girl would do. I know. <laughs> I also went to African drumming classes. Oh, Seriously? my gosh. Fortune. Casting a wide net to make friends. Oh, you were doing God. that solely to make friends? Solely to make friends. And did, who was your lasting friend from your African drumming class, from your... Um, she just texted me last week, Monica. Mm-hmm. She's having her <laughs> birthday party soon. But yeah, I went from like, because I remember it was 2005. I had been in LA for a year and a half and it was Christmas time and I called my mom. I'm like, I'm so sad. I don't have any friends. LA's so hard. Nobody's nice. Nobody talks to each other. I don't know what to do. And she goes, do you want to come home and move in with me? I go, no. <laughs> she said then she goes then you need to start trying to make friends you need to put yourself out there you got it how old were you um 20 i would have been 25 okay she was like you know of course she's like go to church i'm like no next (laughs) (laughs) she's like okay i do this weirdly when when i moved to england i weirdly uh, i had a slow time making friends in England, but I, I moved there with my girlfriend. So we had each other, but I had this day job in like a call center and I weirdly did go to a church group to meet oh, yeah? people. I was yeah. just interested. It was like a, I could go on my lunch break at work. It was right around the corner and I went mm-hmm. once a week because I really liked the stories and the mythology and stuff. Yeah. And I thought mm-hmm. maybe this is what I'm missing. And I'd go and you get a ham sandwich and you talk about St. Paul and his letters to the Ephesians or whatever. <laughs> and I was very quickly i was like oh no this is bad because they were like they weren't into me and they were not into gay people and i was like damn because i kind of was hoping i'd <laughs> like, find this i was this, really like... into y'all stories but i guess i'll leave <laughs> yeah i was loving these stories man, loved but... your ham sandwiches man <laughs> yeah yeah I guess i'll go date girls now <laughs> <laughs> i was just trying to be proactive and i thought maybe i'd find some spirituality i was i was lacking and well people do meet each other at those church you know you just have to both your um life views and morals have to line up for that to be your people you know i should have found but, like a, a unitarian like kind of you know yeah this is something like, like that yeah yeah well i ended up going from my mom was just like if you want to be there and you want to if you don't want to come home then you have to start being the one trying and i ended up that's when i went to craigslist found all those different sports african <laughs> drumming all these things oh so in God. 2005 amazing i went from also being in the closet mm-hmm. and having no friends to now i realize i'm gay i've joined all these groups all these sports teams by <laughs> summertime i have so many friends and i'm throwing barbecues in my backyard i'm oh introducing people to each other wow i have oh like God. all the friends and i'm now like the social guru for the next like eight years Oh my um, God. And like people met their now spouse at my barbecues. I'd have these big barbecues every year and I would have friends perform and we'd raise money for charity things. And, um, and like people were Other like, oh, shy I met PAs. so many friends at your barbecues. And, um, and that's also the year I started stand up. All these things happened in wow. 2005 because I put myself out there. I remember when I first moved to LA, I called my mother and I was, I told her, that I was so scared about an earthquake mm-hmm. hit it. You know, I just, yeah. I'd only seen them in movies and TV shows. And it seemed like I, it was my impression that an earthquake meant that the city, the building, everything would be rattling for like 30 minutes. Right. I, I, I didn't think it was quick. Right. And, uh, and I remember when I called my mother, concerned about earthquakes she said oh well sweetie why don't you move home (laughs) yeah (laughs) and i was i was like almost 30 years old i mean i was like maybe 26 27 i was like i can't move home because i'm scared of an earthquake (laughs) (laughs) but um i'm still a little scared of earthquakes oh yeah they're scary yeah but luckily they don't last 30 minutes right i I felt one i was like a a year ago or so and I just got dumped and I was so sad and then um and then the like the night after I got dumped the earthquake it was the first time I'd ever been awake and felt one mm. and it was like 
man, there, I, there's nothing lonelier than being alone in an earthquake. Like, <laughs> just like awake in bed and like, well, broken hearted. No yes. No one, no one to look out for. Are you okay? No yeah. one to like, reach for. And you're just like, yeah. I guess the earth is about to swallow me whole. And I feel God the love earth it. Move under, <laughs> under my, my feet. feet. Our son Finn came into our room when he was like three, maybe in the middle of the night. And right when he got in our bed, an earthquake hit oh, and it no. like really yeah, rattled and like moved the house. He was so confused and scared. And after that happened, anybody he came across, he was like, wanting to talk about earthquakes and how it's going to be okay. And you oh don't have God. to be scared. It, no. it, yeah. And he was processing it through nurturing other people that oh. weren't even concerned or asking about it. <laughs> and this went on for a good year. Thomas, oh I don't know if you were uh, my assistant at that time, um, but uh, it was the saddest, cutest thing to see him trying to work that out but it didn't it didn't go away quickly for him yeah he's like yeah. i'm never getting in that bed again yeah exactly <laughs> that's so funny though yeah i love like him, yeah i love when kids are working stuff out via like mm -hmm. thinking that they're helping other people but it's so obvious that they're oh I, the this child who i live with Yes. We're, we you know, struggles with losing at board games like mm -hmm. yeah like finds that really upsetting and and so we were I was like oh this is a good idea I'm gonna pretend so I was like oh man sometimes if if I lose a board game I just flip out like I I get so mad and we were, we were yeah. playing this board game I was like guys if I lose like I'm I might like cause some real shit here like I, I'm gonna yeah. freak out and she was like that. yeah and she was like oh no if, you some know real shit, like, cause some real shit. <laughs> But then she's like soothing me and she's like, you know, sometimes you lose and it's like helping Aww. her because she's like, yeah, you, know, yeah. you can't win all the time. And then and then I she kind of wants to see me lose now. So I I lose and I'm like, oh, my Dude, God. And then I like throw up, destroy pillow. the house. Yeah. I go outside. I'm like, I got to cool down. I got to go outside. And she's like, OK, you got to take a deep breath. And then we're playing. A, <laughs> and then I'm slowly realizing like she. There's a point at which she just thinks I'm a psychopath. Like I got it, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm teaching her, but I don't want her She's to think like, I'm actually has like... real anger issues. <laughs> yeah, <it's> yeah. Like... <laughs> this is related but unrelated. But who cares? Um, last night, uh, Max and Finn had these little ice cream pops, and Finn had his first, and then Max came downstairs, and. Um, Finn, Finn is so aware of these ice cream. Pot. They love them. He he loves them in particular. He yeah. loves them so much. And so if we have friends coming over, he's always like, uh, maybe we should buy uh, a few boxes of those ice creams. And uh, Ooh, so he's like really, he's really on it, you know. So last night he finishes his ice cream. Time goes by. Then Max comes down and Finn is like, uh, Max, uh, do you want your ice cream? And, uh, and Max is like, uh, yeah, sure. And he goes, oh, okay, Max, do you want me to get it for you? And, uh, and so he's assisting in the whole process because he wants to be close to that ice cream. He wants it, <laughs> but he knows he can't have it. So, he's, so he gets ice cream out of the freezer for Max. And then he's like, uh, Max, do you want a little bowl to put your ice cream in when you're Aww. not eating it? And Max is just like, sure. And just like going along. But Finn is just like, here you go, Max. And he's putting it on the counter and like, oh, you know, pulls the chair out for Max to oh sit down. Gosh. And he's just sitting. He's like, what what that translates to is just like I want that ice cream <laughs> so oh desperately. My oh my god, it was so cute. I could that's hardly so deal funny. with it. Is there a world in which he ever gets two, or that's a big no? No, no he they've gotten two, and it's mainly when they've helped themselves to the second one, and mm. and then they act like, oh, I didn't know I couldn't just keep <laughs> eating endless ice cream cones. Yeah, um, well, who me? Uh, yeah. yeah, and then it's like, and they're like, good. Do I just finish it, or do you want it, Mayor? And it's like, no, you can have it, but you can't just 
eat ice cream until bedtime. That, that sounds like me. I'm like, what? Yeah. What? I didn't know. I, okay. <laughs> no, nope, nobody told me. I didn't know me. that we shouldn't do that. I didn't know there was a Except limit. Except I'm a grown woman and this is my wife that I'm having this conversation <laughs> with. <laughs> oh, my bad. I mean, it was just there. I was like, okay, whatever. We had, we had one of those boxes of chocolates that have different flavors all in it. And I had mm-hmm. set it aside because it wasn't vegan to give to somebody else. And when I decided, oh, oh, right, that box of chocolates, I'll... I'll give, I'll bring that, give that to this person, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, I open it. <laughs> no joke. There was a nibble out of every no. chocolate in oh there. Oh my God. <laughs> and one or both of our roommates had gone in there and tasted all of the chocolates. <laughs> but what self-restraint to not eat the whole thing? Like just the, to take a notice. little nibble? But I think it was because it's not vegan. It probably tasted weird to them. Oh, that's oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's so funny. Well, should we get into our uh, question? We should. I'm excited about this because yeah. we've wanted to get him on. Well, we did record. We recorded like an yeah. hour and a half long. Mm-hmm. Like, great episode. Great. It actually in- was really good. Mm-hmm. I know. It was like an interview episode. It was, and it then was we, when we were test testing this sh- our podcast and what it would be. Trying to figure out what it is. Yeah, and yeah Brett, like the we had format. Like a guest in person and Brett like was like one of us. Yeah. yeah. And then we were like, no, oh, we're just going to get people to do questions. So <laughs> I'm glad that we finally have got him on. A lot of people have asked for him mm-hmm. uh, on the socials. Uh, so today we have Brett Goldstein. He's an actor, a writer, a comedian, best known for playing Roy Ken on Ted Lasso. He's won two Emmys for that role, which is mm-hmm. insane. Two Emmys. He also co-created the show Shrinking. And you can listen to his podcast, Films to be Buried With. It's uh, the most handsome comedian around. Brett Goldstein. Nice. Hi, handsomes. This is Brett Goldstein. Big fan, huge fan. Uh, My question for you all is, do you have a recurring dream or nightmare that you perhaps had all your life? I'd like to hear from all three of you, please, in a specific order. Tig first, then Mm. Mavis, then Fortune. (laughs) I like how Brett says our names. That's the first Pig. guest who's requested a specific order. Davis. Yeah. Yeah, Which I like mean? it. But I feel a little on the spot here, especially since I don't really remember my dreams. Really? Oh, yeah. No. Well, think about it for a second. I do want to say about Brett. Um, I have a lot to say about Brett. Oh, he's just the dreamiest. He really is. I know I'm a big old Les. We <laughs> all know this about me yeah my wife's a big old les my mm-hmm. wife's been out since she was 15 mm-hmm. we're both gold stars yeah that means we've never had the pain mm-hmm. i know where this is going but brett is your i mean my wife saw him last night at that um we went to this thing and he was there and she giggled like a schoolgirl. <laughs> i'm not my wife does not there's no man in the world that can make my wife giggle and she was like <laughs> Brett. that's so funny and, and then she she realized she did it and she goes oh my god he just made me giggle i go i know <laughs> you're like just, yeah i know how do you think i feel honey <laughs> that was very confusing to me too um but Wait, i see him. he he has that effect on everyone even like giant celebrities mm. i've seen them meet him and like they are giggling he's got this thing i know he really does and and but it it's so funny like i think he had to come to america for that to really explode like he was successful in england and mm. but I, i've known him for so long i'm just from this stand-up circuit and we lived together one summer at the edinburgh fringe and stuff and mm-hmm. he, he was always like amazing and so charming and yeah. but something he he has morphed into a true heartthrob i don't know the british folks didn't appreciate it quite like the americans do they do now and they did but i don't know he's i think he really tapped into something with that character roy mm-hmm. kent i think he really lit people's ponties on fire with he that. He really lit the ponties on fire for well, sure. Well, I think Americans, yeah. they love an accent, mm-hmm. you know, he's, yeah. he's bringing it. And he's got that combination of masculinity and vulnerability, which yes. is like catnip. He's like such a dude, but then he's like, Fortune, how are you feeling? <laughs> you know, he'll have like this like deep conversation where he's looking you in the eyes and he's like, that's great. Who's... <laughs> 
been your favorite person tonight that you've talked to? I'm like, yeah, you? I mean, I also think the bar <laughs> is in this, at some of those parties, those like Hollywood parties, the bar is so low for just like people actually being engaged and looking yeah. you in the eye and saying something. And like, so I think a lot of the Brits stand out for that reason because they're like, they actually want to chat, you know? Oh, that's a, oh, was that a British thing? Cause yeah, uh, the LA thing is you're talking to someone and they're looking over your shoulder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To see who else is in the room? Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. yeah. They're like, oh, there's Thomas Willette. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. We, there's Brett Thomas. and I, a video of me and Brett kissing on stage went on, someone posted on Twitter or something, and it's mm-hmm. the most watched thing of anything I've ever done in my whole career. Like the most, wow. it got the mo- <laughs> more attention than anything I've ever done. And people were like, is that Simon Cowell and Ellen DeGeneres? <laughs> we all did a show together and you named it what was it called we do it yeah that we that we make love to one another live on stage we right. do a lot of making out we do a lot of yeah well so y'all named it that kind of as a joke right but then people came really wanting y'all to make out yeah the vent with the first we arrived to do it and the venue was like do you guys need a tarp on stage or some pot? we were like what do you think this do you is? need like, a bed yeah we're like, <laughs> like you're gonna have a sex show yeah <laughs> yeah you guys probably need a tarp right (laughs) we did make out for real once in our lives oh really how did how did that go we were at the edinburgh fringe festival and we were like we were both single i think we went into the month we were sharing an apartment and at the beginning of the month we were like hey man both of us were like you know we're probably gonna be out a lot we're probably gonna bring home a lot of babes like this is gonna be a really fun month we could not get laid the whole month (laughs) And every night we'd go out and being like, I think I got a vibe with this person. And for some reason we couldn't get, we Close couldn't even deal. kiss anyone. Uh-huh. We were striking out left, right and center. And we were like, what is wrong? Are we repulsive? Like what's happening? And then right near the end of the month, we went to a party and I think I had instigated spin the bottle at the party. And so we, were like, ton- we were like, tonight's the night we're going to, we're going to hook up with people again ended up walking home just the two of us the sun's coming up and we were like i mean shit shit." (laughs) yeah exactly and then i think i did a smooth move which is i got a i got like a glass bottle from a recycling bin we were walking by and i spun it on the ground i was like should we just play spin the bottle and then we made out for a bit and then it was and then we were both like all right well anyway good night (laughs) It it, it didn't have the magic that the friendship has the friendship is too magic. It's yeah, too but, magical, um, yeah. Sometimes you just don't have that smoochy smooch with the, your friends. Like you tried it and it was like, eh. I love kissing him. But yeah, we, we're he's, he's just the best, kindest yeah. friend. Well, I have remembered um, a dream that I've had a few times. See? Oh, great. Look, See, all, all we had to do is. <laughs> it's not a just, nightmare. We just had Did to he say nightmare? Brett. Or a dream. Yeah, a dream I, or, or nightmare. Both. Okay, well, I've had a dream probably, I don't know, two or three times in my life where I realize I'm in someone's house. I know them and I'm in their house. And I'm like, okay. whoa, why am I in Fortune's kitchen? You know what I mean? Where I, I don't understand how I ended up in that room of somebody's house. Wait, that's it? Yeah. <laughs> oh Sorry. my god, Tig. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I guess I guess as someone who doesn't regularly remember their dreams, you're like, oh yeah, I got one. But that's like the to I think to the average person, that's like the the first one percent of a dream. You know, like Well, lot, I'm lucky I got happened. even that. I mean, because I just wake up going, Well, I guess I was just unconscious and now I'll just get this new day started, you yeah. know? I'm kinda like that too though. Seriously? Yeah, I don't have I I don't have a lot of vivid dreams that I remember. Oh my god, I'm I'm just tossing and turning, talking in my sleep, dreaming. I'm I think my subconscious is more unhealthy than yours, guys. What does it mean if someone has a lot of dream? Are we all having dreams, but some of us remember and some of us well, don't? Well, it depends or? on if you get to that uh, realm, right? Because uh, some of them you don't dream right uh, of, of like rem because you know i have this i have this app called sleep talk mm-hmm. that records it records your whole night and it's activated by sound so it records if you're talking in your sleep and mainly it's farts let's be honest but then farts. there's 
<laughs> so but, you have a chatty bottom? It's like this. I have a, and wait, what does Parvati think about your chatty bottom? No, I'm 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 not really farting a lot in my sleep, but I, like I think a chatty bottom. May it sounds like maybe you have a chatty bottom. Does anyone out there listening have a chatty bottom? If oh so, my god. Let us know here at the honk, handsome honk. pod. But I'm like such a conflict averse person in my life. I never raise my voice really very rarely and and in my sleep I am like fuck you. I am Whoa. angry. I am it's so wow. crazy. And I wanted to find getting all that aggression out in your dreams. Yes. It's life telling you to speak up. Mm -hmm. Your dreams saying, let it out, May. Yeah. So then the in the app it saves like I it saves all the recordings and you you yeah. type Let's hear out. your chatty bottom. Go on. Let's hear so that I chatty bottom. Hang on. <laughs> Who's got that chatty bottom? <laughs> May's got that chatty bottom. <laughs> I said, who's got that chatty bottom? May's got that chatty bottom. Chatty bottom. Yeah. Okay, okay. And then chatty behind bottom. May is. Oh, yeah. Wah, 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 wah. And that's okay, the Charlie is, Brown. Uh huh. This is one that is funny because I sound so lucid. And um, mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, this is, this is a rat. And I'm saying it, it sounds like I'm in. Game of Thrones the or mafia. something. Yeah. Wait. I don't know That's what that like, was actually. That uh that was sexy time. Yeah, that sounded very intimate. Put, put your hand okay. here. No, put is it here. Is that what that was? Okay, I don't put your hand right here. I don't here. know what that put was. Put your I don't hand know on my said. chatty bottom. No, that's whoa, not. Whoa, Can you whoa, plug whoa. my chatty bottom? No. <laughs> I want you to plug it. Plug my chatty bottom. <laughs> Cork Just it. Get a finger and put it in my chatty bottom. <laughs> <laughs> you go, what was that? Put your hand right here. On okay, my okay, okay. okay this is, that is here my is, um, chatty bottom. Here's this is a rat. This is a rat that was in your sound, sleep i'm asleep and yeah. i sound like judy dench can you, can you play that one more time <laughs> yeah okay ready can you make that a song do you think i should remix yes it? of course okay this is a rat it's <laughs> insane it's insane i hope that there is somebody on the other side of that going what is this yeah and they're just pointing at a rodent <laughs> Oh this is a rat and you are so like um it sounds like you're fully awake mm -hmm. yeah. um and and you're enunciating this is so, a rat okay I, this is years ago i'm in england i was dating someone at the time and she's you can hear her she's in bed with me mm. and uh this is what she wakes up to okay ready imagine this you fucking hypocrite <gasps> <gasps> That, I'm that was you I, again? Yes, and I sound strangled. I'm fully asleep, I swear. I'm going to play it for you again. You fucking hypocrite. Like, what? <laughs> that sounds like and a then, scene from a movie. It's so abusive. So then she goes, what? And then you, and then I go... I want to break up with you. And you're laughing. I want to break up with you and you're laughing? I might break up with you and you're laughing. So she's trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. <laughs> And then oh, we wow. get to the we get to the bottom of what's going on. So in this next clip, you can hear her poor little scared voice, and she's like, "May, stop it! You're scaring me. You're scaring me, and it's not funny." And I'm c completely asleep, and I'm like, "I'm awake." I love that you record all these. It's well, that's app. the app. Get that app, Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I'm really pissed. What? Stop it because you're talking and it's scaring me. It's so scary. Did you? Okay, then I say why I'm mad. Okay, then this is the big reveal of why oh. I've been going, you fucking hypocrite. I'm going to break up with you. The reveal well, is because she doesn't know what a rat is. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. If, okay, so this is the big reveal. Yeah. It's so scary. Did you fuck Harry Style? <laughs> Did you fuck Harry Style? <laughs> <laughs> with no ass 
I thought you said, did you fuck her still? No, did you fuck Harry Style? And I love her reaction, my girlfriend at the time. It's so scary. Did you fuck Harry Style? <laughs> you gotta wake up. Okay. I'm pissed off. Wow. <laughs> that is Okay, that but crazy. here's my concern. <laughs> how, I have a few. How old is your mattress? It did go. <laughs> it's like a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> like just talking, it's squeaking like I, Willy Wonka's grandparents' like you were bed. A Charles Dickens novel. Yeah, I was completely picturing Willy Wonka's grandparents, all four of them lying in that old bed. <laughs> Look, it's head an to Ikea, toe. Ikea bed frame. That <laughs> I, I built it My very badly. Stop. You're scaring me. <laughs> And do you think she brought Harry Style back to that squeaky bed? Did you fuck Harry Style? You- like, I'm so abusive and scary. And <laughs> she's. It is. Your voice is very, like, yeah. Um, like, you're in the mafia. Like, yeah. It's like do? real emotion, right? Yeah. yeah. You it fucking felt like a hypocrite. scene from your show, Feel Good. Really? Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah. Because of the British accent. May, yeah. stop. You're scaring me. And that accent is sexy. It's a sexy accent. Oh, just in my day-to-day life, I'm not a jealous person. I'm not accusatory. I don't, if I, in my subconscious, I'm like, you better not fucking look at anyone. Like, it's crazy. I think at some point we've all been concerned. Did our partner sleep with Harry Style? <laughs> <laughs> the only happy sleep talk recording I have, because they're, they're all kind of upsetting. And then the only really cheerful one I have is there's one, a couple of years ago, one night I go, oh boy. I got a puppy. And I say it like that. <laughs> I go, oh boy. I oh got a boy. puppy. <laughs> oh boy. Wow, that's that's cool. I um yeah, I didn't even know about this app. No. So you, you don't remember your dreams either, Fortune? No, not really. I have this like one dream I remember when I was like a kid of a of a witch kind of like the Wizard of Oz coming over the banister and that scared me for like years. Over the banister? Yeah, like the green witch, very giant witch came there. Like it was at my grandmother's house. She had like this wraparound staircase. And the witch like came over the staircase and with the big scary green. I'd probably just watch The Wizard of Oz or something. I would bet that's true. And, um, (laughs) but in general, yeah. I mean, like last night I had a dream where it's like I couldn't find my car. Um, so sometimes I'll have like stressful dreams where I wake yeah. up going, Ugh, I'm so stressed about whatever I was like, I'm, I, 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 I can consciously when I wake up be like, thank God I woke up. I was so stressed that I couldn't mm-hmm. figure out whatever was happening in that dream. Right. It's so crazy when you have, I, I had a dream once that I kissed Ricky Lindholm. Oh, really? Who's, who's Ricky yeah. Lindholm? She's an actress, writer, okay. director. She's part of, um, Garfunkel and Oates. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the blonde. Yeah. She's an old friend, and I have never looked at her that way. And I had a dream that we macked down. <laughs> and then when I saw her again, I was like, Ricky, oh, my gosh. I had this insane dream where we were kissing. And I, oh, my I, God. Yeah, I think there was probably a week where I thought I was kind of attracted to Ricky because of that <laughs> kiss in my dream (laughs) it was so crazy i haven't had many dreams like that about somebody and it was so ricky felt so random to me it was i wonder yeah what she represents to your subconscious or something that's so funny it's so funny to me how your brain it's like you're sitting side stage as a director and you're like okay now bring on the elephant with the uh wig okay and now take (laughs) make out with uh ricky it's like a director that is yeah. out of their mind. Nothing yeah. makes sense. And you're just like, oh, okay. Ricky Lindholm? Okay, sure. Huh? Kiss her. I had a dream about Eminem once, like Marshall Mathers, where uh-huh. we, it was a full love story where like when I woke up, I felt like I understood him. I connected to him. Like I, I felt so much loyalty to Eminem. And like, <laughs> guys, I get him. Like, <laughs> yeah, it felt so real. But yeah. my, my my dad used to have, he is good at like lucid dreaming and, and in his childhood and into his teens, if he was having a nightmare, he knew that if he could just find a bowl of tomato soup in the dream, like he'd go, oh, fuck, I'm in a nightmare right now. 
I got to look for the bowl of tomato soup. And he'd find it like behind a couch or under a table. And if he could wow. just take a sip of it, then the the whole dream would be flooded by warm tomato soup and he'd wake up. Oh, that's interesting. That is I've wild. I've never heard of that. Yeah. My wife has had dreams where in my in her dream, I did something mm. um, <laughs> that she didn't care for. Mm. And or like talk or like kissed a girl or something, and she would wake up upset with me. Yeah, and I'd be like, "What's going on? What's going on?" <laughs> I've she had like, that. I... I've had that where um, I've ha- that is a recurring dream where Stephanie breaks up with me. Oh, and okay, now the truth comes out. There's yeah. a lot of dreaming. Have we got Ricky? We got. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was I woke up a few days de- devastated and upset with Stephanie and oh yeah and they're just like I didn't do anything mm-hmm. I was <laughs> over like, here snoring yeah they're like I did not care for the way you broke up with me the mm-hmm. the thing that I have done that has stood out the most to me was clearly there was some sort of dream happening I talk about it in my stand up. Um, special sweet and salty but um i had gone i had done that whole 30 thing where you cut out all this stuff and you only Mm -hmm. eat whole foods you know Mm -hmm. and um i had eliminated sugar and dairy and gluten and everything and um i stayed off of that stuff for a couple months and then when i i had a show in toronto and i came um and everyone was like you have to eat this chicken sandwich and um I don't know why I decided to break my whole foods thing and I ate it and that night I guess I had like crazy dreams and I've never had this happen before but I woke up and I had my hands on Jack's like (laughs) kind of towards her um chest what and I was gonna kill her (laughs) (laughs) or eat her Oh my yeah, God. eat her like a sandwich. <laughs> and she goes, What are you doing? I go, What? What? And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like coming to. And she's like, Oh my God. I go, Oh my God. And I'm <laughs> oh my I go, What God. was that? She goes, I don't know. And we're both looking at each other like, What the F? And I go, It's the gluten. <laughs> <laughs> it's Can you gluten. imagine that in a trial? Yeah. Your Honor, it was the gluten. Yeah, it was the craziest thing I've ever experienced. I think something was happening in my dream. I was like trying to protect myself and didn't realize I had like lunged at Jack's. Oh and it wasn't, God. thank God, it wasn't like a real, like it was just kind of my hands were in her vicinity. <laughs> but we were you both like, like so oh throttling. my God. Did, were you sent to the guest room for the next month? <laughs> I mean, she definitely was like, what the f and i go yeah. i don't know i i don't i don't it has never happened since nothing I, it's not <laughs> like i'm not like a t- sleep talker or walker yeah or yeah choker or any of it you're not a sleep choker <laughs> but it was um i really do think the gluten the gluten got me wow there's a if you're listening to this and also you guys there's a video on youtube just search mom sleepwalking and it's this kid in in his 20s and he's filmed his mom sleepwalking and she's being hilarious she's like the tomato cage is open or something like that Uh and then he shows her then there's a video of he's showing her that video and she has no idea she's been filmed she's like what are what are we about to watch he's like just watch just watch and then you watch her react to seeing herself in the kitchen fully doing these weird movements and being and it, it is so funny she goes oh that's not that's not right that's not right. It's crazy. <laughs> you gotta yeah. watch it. Well, yeah, I also find it fascinating when people do like all that, like online shopping and stuff on Ambien. Wow. And then they have, yeah, I have friends that have like been on Ambien and they ordered like a ton of stuff from Amazon. And really? all these packages showed up a couple days later and they're like, what is this? <laughs> It's wild when your body can just function like that mm-hmm. and move about the world and do things and you're not, there's nobody at home. What if I had done this whole, like every episode of our podcast, I'd just been on Ambien the whole time. <laughs> like I didn't even know I was doing the <laughs> handsome like, Wait, pod. I'm on the handsome pod? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm I like, mean, yeah, May, obviously. Chatting with friends. <laughs> Mike uh, Berbiglia. Oh, you that's know, right. Our, our previous guest, he very famously jumped out of a window 
What? Yeah, you oh, don't know about that? No. Oh, yeah, because he's a sleep. A he's crazy a sleepwalker. sleepwalker. He jumped out of a second story window. Oh, fuck. And to this day, he has to be zipped up in this like sleeping bag with mittens on so he mm-hmm. like can't get himself out of that oh my god i mean i can't imagine yeah he did a, a show about it and a movie about it mm-hmm. called sleepwalk with me okay I, i'm gonna watch that that's yeah. crazy yeah yeah i bet so, there are a lot of people who use it as a fake defense and in, in court like i mean there definitely have been cases mm-hmm. where the person was like i had no idea i was asleep yeah I robbed that bank. I was fully asleep. They're in the bank being like, did you fuck Harry Style to the cashier? (laughs) With your chatty bottom. (laughs) Honk, honk. Should we listen to uh, Brett's answer? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Yeah, let's do it. I regret putting that order. I think the order may have been a mistake. I didn't Uh realize it would lead to such trouble between the three of you. It was just top of my head. The order wasn't in. It didn't mean anything. I hope you didn't take any meaning from the order. <laughs> My answer to... I have I have a recurring dream. Quite a dark one. I have a dream that... I Someone gives me drugs before a show. And I smoke the drugs. And the drugs are so strong that I go blind. <laughs> and I can't communicate or explain that I'm so high that I can't see. And I sort of get put on stage like go and do the show and I'm blind and so high I can't speak and that's kind of the dream so it's sort of like dreaming that you've forgotten your lines but instead of that you're blind and you're fucked (laughs) (laughs) I have had dreams before about like forgetting lines in plays Mm -hmm. or not getting my homework done in Mm. school like as an adult oh Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have always had a fear of forgetting my lines in a live sh- like stage show. Have you ever had that happen? I've I've definitely blanked out before. I had it happen on Conan, my very <gasps> first Conan set. Um, when I did stand up, they they were supposed to have my bullet points on a cue card, and no one told the it didn't go down the um chain of command oh my god so i was started my set and it was going well but i i just like i'm just gonna glance at the cue cards and the cue card guy was sitting on the ground with the cue cards on his lap and so (laughs) then my like ocd kicked in of like oh wait he he's supposed to have the cue cards and he's not does and should someone tell him that he doesn't have the cue cards and i couldn't call up my next like this is all going in my head yeah oh my god i couldn't call up my next joke because my like OCD kind of thing was spinning. And why is he just sitting there with them in his lap? No one told him I needed cue cards. He no assumed one... that the comedian knew their own material. <laughs> knew their five minutes. <laughs> but it was my, it was my, it was a long time ago and it was my yeah, very yeah, yeah. first televised set. So I was yeah. nervous. So I wanted the yeah. bullet points as a security yeah. blanket. Yeah, yeah. So I was looking at, I was going, um, um and it felt oh. like i mean it felt like a lifetime it is it was my true nightmare come to life yeah i look at conan he's like smiling <laughs> I look at andy he's smiling everyone's oh my like God. i know they're like feeling for me and mm-hmm. i kind of stumble my way back into my set and thank god just i figured it out and kept it going and then the when they put it out they took out that part luckily because yeah. oh. i got done and there are people come running over. Oh my God, we're so sorry. That was, you know, yeah. it, they knew it wasn't on me. So I think that's yeah, why yeah. they gave me the grace of editing it. Oh my God. <laughs> I'm glad that you were able to get back, like get your I mojo know. back and I, finish I, it. Because I was like, I was stuck. I was paralyzed. I, I was like, I don't know how to get pull out of this. And I know we already talked on another episode about um, my Taylor Dane bit. Mm-hmm. But um, I did that bit on Conan, and it was during a time when um, I had just been so sick and hospitalized for my intestinal disease, and my mother had died, and my girlfriend and I broke up that day, and I went on wow. <laughs> and was doing Taylor Dane, and I spaced out. And 
I was so overwhelmed with life and the audience was like laughing nervously oh, and um, thinking I was doing a bit and I was acknowledging that I was like, oh, you think I'm doing a bit? I'm actually, I was just blanked. And then mm. when I went backstage, the producer came up and he was like, hey, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We can clean that up. And, and I was so down and out that I yeah. just was like, you know what? I don't even care. Just just <laughs> oh put it out God. like that. Yeah. Just put it out like that. I'm sure wow. people will be interested to see mm-hmm. somebody flailing like that. I'm fine with it. And he yeah. was like, really? And I said, yeah, if you could, just put it out like that. Oh, you actually wanted that? You are like, I want that. I yeah. just thought, I, I was just in such a crazy headspace of like, you know, losing my health and my mother and my girlfriend that I was just like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'll just, eh, I don't it. even care. Just put it out like it is. I don't, I, I'm not together. So you don't even have to make it look like I'm together. So it went out. And then I remember somebody had written a piece about that appearance. Yeah. Speculating if I was doing a bit or not. Right. <laughs> oh my God. I, I no, was is not this meta. Do- yeah. I was not doing a bit. I was stumbling through the whole thing. And, oh my God. And yeah. So it's out there for your enjoyment. You are unpredictable in that way that I would not know either if it was mm-hmm. a bit. Yeah. I'd be not. like, is this some genius Andy <laughs> Kaufman meta anti comedy thing? <laughs> nope. It was just nope. someone right. down and out, just went through a breakup hours before. <laughs> oh god. Um and no, like... uh and I, I didn't even know right around the corner I was gonna get a, a cancer diagnosis. That was oh just creeping around the corner. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but I yeah, like it's I I I've been endlessly amused watching that because of what the audience thought was going yeah. on that was not what was going on. They're like, "Gosh, Tig, she she's so inventive. <laughs> Is she so inventive when she when you think she's going to zig, she zags." <laughs> <laughs> when you think she's going to zip, she zap zops. Zap zop. Zap it <laughs> I was just thinking that, but I don't have the training to know zap zop zip zip or whatever zap, zap. it was. <laughs> so zip. you get where Brett's anxiety comes from, though. That yes. That's like a profoundly mm-hmm. universal fear mm-hmm. to be in front of an audience and yeah, incapacitated like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. God, and he was he was really uh, he was regretting giving us the the order to answer in, but little did he know we would ignore that instruction completely. <laughs> <laughs> we sort of followed it. Yeah. Did we? Yeah. I just love he's the only person on earth that calls me Mavis. And I want yeah. to clarify my name is not short for Mavis. May yeah. is not short. It's just what he calls me. And he's the only one who I would allow that. Your lover boy. Yeah. <laughs> I call him Bradley because one time he, he has a story that he was on vacation in Jamaica and uh he introduced himself to this guy like five times and every time the guy just thought his name was Bradley, so he <laughs> Be like morning Bradley <laughs> and, I just... and he might play one of the grumpiest characters on television and the, you know quote unquote meanest and he's yeah. the nicest biggest sweetheart hmm. yeah well that was a fun episode I gotta keep it in my ponties over here yeah, yeah. <laughs> seriously <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah that was great we have um some stuff to plug if you guys are into uh seeing some more comedy we've got it for you i am at largo on the 24th of uh feb that's all i know at the moment confirmed definitely come to that though and if you're out in new york i'm gonna be at in i'm gonna be in peak skill new york march 8th second show added uh in waterville maine march 10th and then just zigzagging around zip zap zip zops all around los angeles between largo and dynasty typewriter so just go to my website tignotaro.com sign up for the uh email list so you get all the important information right away and it'll give you all ticket and show information there too um i'm at the chicago theater this weekend february 24th it's been sold out for a minute but we usually day of release some tickets it's been a dream of mine to do that theater so i'm Super pumped. Madison, nice. Wisconsin on Sunday. Then coming up, I have Houston, Texas, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Wilmington, and Durham, North Carolina. Uh, Los Angeles, doing the Ace Hotel Theater. 
New York City, The Beacon, Seattle. Uh, we added a sh third show on that Friday. And um, Toronto. Uh, so you can get tickets at fortunefeemster.com. Nice. As always, check out handsomepod.com for merch. Yes, and We got the some merch. good gear. It's real yeah, good. Keep sending us pictures. We love seeing people in your handsome shirts and hats and your pretty little lady sweatshirts. It's so Ooh. fun to see. Also, so make sure you subscribe to Handsome. That is so key. Subscribe to the show if you want to see us continue doing this. That's what keeps us going. And also tell a friend. Share an episode. Share this episode. Tell an enemy. Yeah, you tell know, an enemy. Tell we don't care. If you hate yeah. somebody, make them laugh. And review yeah. us. Give us five stars. Give us a rave review. We do really appreciate everybody who, who keeps listening. This podcast yeah. continues to blow us away as far as the response. And yes. people just, it feels like a little community that we've created. We have For um, sure. pages that our fans chat with each other and on our Instagram, on a Facebook fan page. There's a lot of handsome folks that, that uh, are finding that community. And I love that. I love that people have a place they can go that are, you know, where they're share with each other. And I don't think I knew there was a Facebook community going. I haven't been in there, but that I, I was told about that. Mm, okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah, man. And Reddit, all kinds of stuff. Well, until Reddit. next time, right? <laughs> Yeah. How about you guys? Keep, Keep it, it handsome. handsome. Um. <laughs>